Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of m0a.com and in this video, it's a VFR sectional chart quiz. What is happening, m Nation? Jason Shepard here. I hope you're loving this flight planning series. It's a VFR quiz today. Next week is an IFR low and root chart quiz. So be watching for that. In the meantime, if you need any help, don't forget about our number one rated online ground school. Head over to m0atrial.com. Prep for the written, prep for the check ride. But most importantly, as our members know, making you that safe real world pilot. Well, let's get right into that real world. And I wanna show you some things on a VFR sectional chart that may have you scratching your head sometimes because you don't always see them. So let's head to the iPad, let's look at those together. So we're in kind of my neck of the woods. So let's start with Central Florida type area here. And I wanna show you something kind of interesting. If I zoom in here on Orlando Executive, uh, Orlando Executive is a class D, but why do I have that minus 16? Do you see that, this guy right here, the minus 16? Why do I have a minus 16 there? What does that actually mean? Well, that's because my class delta goes up to, but not including 1,600 feet. Why is that the case? Well, if we dig around this Bravo that we're underlying, look, the Bravo actually starts right here. We can see at 1,600 feet in this area. So that is why we can't have a delta at 1,600 feet. Am I in a delta or am I in a Bravo? Well, at 1,600 feet, you're in the Bravo. At 1,599 feet, you're in the Delta. Good luck arguing that with uh, the FISDO or the FAA if you have an airspace violation. Here's another example though of a similar thing. What on earth is happening in this Charlie airspace here where it says T to the, to the surface or surface to the T? What does that mean? Well, it means essentially the same thing as our minus 16. And I don't know why they didn't just keep it nice and continuous for us here, but it's the same thing with the Charlie. How I remember this is this Charlie goes from the surface to the T, its top is to the bottom of the Bravo. Um, in this case, we'd have to look around and see what this actually goes up to. You can see most Charlies want to go up to 4,000 feet, uh, usually some 4,500, but you can see if we map out, I'll just do it in red here, but if we follow this Bravo all the way around, right, we can see how this Bravo over Lina starts at 3,000 feet. So at 2,999 feet, what airspace are you in? You're in, you're in this Charlie. At 3,000 feet, what are you in? You're in this Bravo. Does that, that make sense for everybody? Just some different things you're gonna see. Let's head up, let's look at some other things um, you're, uh, you're likely to, well, likely to see in some cases. What's that guy right there? P50. That's a prohibited area. Not too many of those. Maybe you have a prohibited area near you there, uh, near you. Can you fly in a prohibited area, M Missouri Online Ground School members? The answer, well, technically once, right? And then they take your certificate away and you get the fighter jet escort and everything else. The answer is no. You cannot fly in a prohibited area. What about down below it here? St. Mary's. I've actually been to the St. Mary's airport. It is closed. Um, the reason St. Mary's is closed because it was so close to the prohibited area. Can you, can you imagine taking off at a St. Mary's and making an immediate right or left hand turn out of there? Uh, it was never that, uh, that easily done to avoid the prohibited area. Let's look at one more. And then I would love, by the way, if you can start thinking, what are some weird things in your area or on a sectional chart that are just unique to you that can help other people? Maybe give me um, an airport identifier and say, hey, 10 miles southwest of this airport, look at this symbol. I love learning new things on the VFR sectional chart. Check out this. What is this guy here? It's like this gray airspace. What on earth is this gray airspace? That's a tersa. What is a tersa? Respectfully, I kind of look at it as like reject class Charlie airspace. I'm not big enough to be a Charlie, but I still have radar services. Because that's what's really happening. It's not a bad thing by any means. Do I have to participate with a tersa? Let's say I'm flying along. What if I'm just flying along uh, over here, starting, the, starting on the right side of your screen, I'm flying along. Do I need to legally talk to anybody? The answer is no, but it's actually available. And you can see how we have the same altitudes like we would a Charlie, um, but it's called a tersa, terminal radar services area. Now the interior airport of a tersa is always a delta, as you can see there. Um, but they do provide radar services as well, but you do not have to participate. 
as strange as that sounds. So those are some fun ones for you. What are some other ones? Let me know in the comments down below, a weird symbol maybe in your area. Tell me the airport and everything else. would we'll love to hear from you all. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.